nobody's gonna trust anything that I say ever again. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're here in Jen's basement, in, in her library. My... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Holly has called it... What was it? My book basement. basement. Book yep. basement. Because this is a basement flat, so yeah. yeah. Book basement. And it's, it's filled with books, as you would expect. Um, <laughs> and we're going to talk about books, funnily enough. Are we? No. 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 Should we just talk about something else? Tea. Tea. Cheers. We are going to talk about reviewing books and the difficulties of reviewing books. I've got a few ideas. She's made a list. I've made a list. Yeah. Yeah, we have a list. Handy list. I thought that okay. said on burning books. Because <laughs> I don't have my glasses on. That's not what um, it says. No. On reviewing books. Reviewing books. Okay. Rating systems. The star rating system. Why? It is, it is somewhat flawed. Yeah. Why but... don't Goodreads have half stars? Oh. Why Goodreads? Why? I don't think anyone understands. I think they just do it deliberately now. Idea. Yeah. Like, it wouldn't yeah. be that hard, would it? No. What does each star mean for you? Do you follow what Goodreads says? I know that Mercedes does, and Mercedes made a video about this recently about mm. reviewing books, and she said, was it one is, it was, oh, I, I don't want to get this wrong. Like I didn't like it. Two, it was okay. Yeah. Three, it was good. Four, it was really good. Five, yeah. I loved it. Was yeah. It? Yeah. Pretty, pretty much. Yeah. To me, that's not a mass. It's not a massive scale when you do it like that. No, not really. There's and only one I didn't like. There are like levels there. of dislike. There are. Yes, there are, and you can't give zero stars either. No, otherwise it just comes up with no rating. Yeah. Mm. Okay, so how do I uh, do? I use it. I do use it, but I don't put much store by it. Like I wouldn't <laughs> take my ratings on their own. Yeah. Um, and I tend not to write reviews on there either, which I know is probably quite annoying. Some people say, please write reviews, but I prefer talking about books because then you can say everything you want to say. Yeah. Um, nothing's ever too clear when it comes to book reviews. As you said, there are certain mm. levels of dislike. There are certain things you really loved about a book, certain things you really didn't like. Uh, so yeah, I use it because it's a good, I guess, starting point, but yeah. it's not the be all and end all mm. of a review. Um, yeah. That's interesting yeah. about what you say about actually writing a review. Yes. Yeah. I write reviews for the bookshop that I used to work at. I still yeah. write reviews because I quite like that as an exercise. Yeah. When I'm writing books, book reviews for the bookshop, I have to write them in a different sort of way because the idea is to, to sell books. Yeah. So I don't want to be saying, oh, I hate this book. This is not... That's not yeah. good marketing. No, it's, <laughs> it's not. It's not good for business. So it, I won't review books that I really didn't like for that on, on there, but I will on Goodreads. Usually I'll be more objective in those reviews and I'll just say these are the sorts of people who will like this book or if you like this then you might like this. Yeah. And yeah. Um, yeah, rather than saying personally I didn't think this was that great. But, yeah, I know yeah. that's the problem when I've seen people get really offended like if I didn't like a book that is their favourite book of all mm. time. Yeah. If they give a low rating out, oh my god I can't believe that you didn't like it, but it's like, yeah. it's okay. It's all right. Yeah, we all like different things. It, it's good. Yeah. It's good. It's okay. Yeah. But I am sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I will tweak my reviews from the ones that I write for the bookshop and then put them onto Goodreads. That's usually how I do it. So you tweak them in what kind of way? If there are things that I didn't like or I found particularly problematic, then I will highlight more in my Goodreads review that people are reading that so that, you know, because they trust my opinion. Yeah. And that is the case with the bookshop as well, but it's it's just a slightly different format. That's interesting. Mm. I think that might be a bit controversial. I don't right? want people to think that I'm, <laughs> I'm being dishonest in my reviews for, for the bookshop, but I, I feel like I'm more objective. It's less personal. Yeah. Um, I guess with regard to reviews in bookshops, so people would, I don't think, unless you're talking to the bookseller about mm. a particular book and they can honestly give you your opinion on it, when they see written reviews, like staff recommends, you know, you would go along a bookshop. Yeah, and course, yeah. I mean, people are expecting you to recommend things that you like. Mm. So I don't think they would necessarily go to those kind of things for a really critical review because mm. that's not what they're about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's just a, yeah. a snippet. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So Jen and I have both received ARCs, so advanced readers' copies, in the past. Mm -hmm. we, we've had a bit of a chat in the past about how we go about doing this and, and go about reviewing something when there are no reviews. Yeah, I was com I was comparing this to, I remembered when I was at uni, so long ago, and we did a module in postmodernism, and um, so a lot of that was to do with Ali Smith and WG Siebold, and a lot of very modern texts that had come out maybe the year before, 
um, and we had to then obviously write essays on them and we all had a little panic because we were so used to going to the library and mm. reading up on criticism and then obviously forming our own opinions but basing something on a theory that was already there which mm. is not something I actually agree with with regard to university teaching a lot I feel like yeah. it's, it's kind of good to know other people's theories but I did find in some modules going off topic here that um, a lot of lecturers would want you to base it in someone else's theory because they had read up on that mm. too um, which is why I liked yeah. writing my dissertation a lot because it was such yeah. a, more about independent thinking and coming up with new theories. Anyway, so a lot of us had a panic about the uh, postmodern one because there was not criticism written about it already and we had to think for ourselves. Yeah. Oh my god! <laughs> so it's a similar kind of thing when you get the arcs, which I hadn't really thought about before, but then when Holly said, what do you do when you haven't seen anyone else talk about their opinion of a book before? Mm -hmm. To me, I haven't ever really considered that. Um, but, you but now I'm going to think about Margaret it. The Outward one, didn't you? Yeah, actually that's true. Yeah. Actually, what I, yeah, the, I reviewed The Heart Goes Last by Margaret Atwood um, in, in a couple of months ago, I can't remember. I'll send Holly the link so that she can yeah. put it in the thing. And I adore Margaret Atwood, but I really had, I didn't enjoy this book very much. And it wasn't necessarily that I wanted to hear other people's thoughts on it, obviously so, not so that I can make up my own mind, but I was just dying to talk to someone about it mm. because the void, there's no one there, like no yeah. one else has read it yet and I felt a bit lonely on my island being like I have bad things to say about this but I feel bad because mm. there's no one to counteract me with really good stuff so that's a problem, mm. Yeah, I feel d I don't want to be the bad wolf mm. but that doesn't stop me from doing it, I just feel bad When I got the advanced readers copy of The Bird Giant Yes Which is very different from all of Ishiguro's other stuff It's very Marmite And yes. yeah People, like now, you can see that people love it or hate it. I really enjoyed it, but I think part of why I really enjoyed it is that there was nothing out there. I didn't know anything about this book. Mm -hmm. And going into it, it was just really, really mysterious. I had no expectations besides for the fact that it's, it's a Shiguro, so I thought, well, the writing's going to be great at least. Yeah. And yeah, I really enjoyed that experience of just discovering things for yourself and not not being influenced by other people's thoughts. Yeah, because whether we like it or not, when you're reading or writing, you're always influenced by whatever you've heard about mm. something, even if you don't yeah. intend to be, and not necessarily in a bad way either, but that's how life works, just things filter through and you take note of them. Mm. Um, I was speaking to Mercedes the other day about writing and she was like, are you not terrified that you're going to copy people? Like, I'd be terrified if I was writing that I was going to copy people. I was like, all the time. Mm. But that's, you've just got to power on through that and know that that's going to happen. Not plagiarism, obviously, but you cherry pick stuff all the time and that yeah. happens when you're reviewing It's the same with design too. as well. I'm always yeah. like, I'll search for things on Pinterest to see if something similar has been done. <laughs> and also I want to say that when I accept a review for a review, when I accept a book for a review, as I've said in my Let's Talk About Books video before, I would never ever accept a book for review that I wasn't planning on reading or wouldn't buy anyway, mm. because what is the point in me reviewing a book that I would never intend to read? Because my review is probably going to be negative because it's not a book I would have got on with anyway. So it's pointless for me and the publisher and it's a waste of everybody's time. So um, if I do give a bad review for something, it's come from a place of probably me thinking I was actually going to like it. As the case is when you buy any book, you're not mm. going to buy a book because you think you might hate it. Yeah, yeah. It's just absolutely. sometimes we're surprised. Yeah. Well, that brings us quite nicely to this next idea, which is about how your expectations of something change yeah. how well influence the way that you then read it for instance we both recently read stoner by john williams <laughs> we had strong opinions. i was i was convinced that i was going to love this book because it's set at a university and it's about this university professor and that's something that i nearly always love but it wasn't the secret history was it N no no it wasn't the secret history and it wasn't like adult harry potter or anything like that it was problematic to say the least so, because I was expecting to really love it, it made the whole experience of it worse, I think. What, like you being continually disappointed? Yeah, well I was expecting it to get better, or to have more character development, or less rape scenes. That would have been good, I would have enjoyed less mm. rape. Yeah, yeah it was quite uncomfortable to read. And yeah. Sorry if you really liked it. Yeah. That's okay if you really liked it, that's good! <laughs> yes, no, and that's the thing, most people have given it really good reviews. Yeah, they had. So, but I, I was Waterstones, sad, book of the year. Really sad to not like it. 
Yeah. You know, I don't go it's out of my way to not like things. No, it's I just know. sometimes it happens. Yeah. On a separate note, with regard to stuff like this, I don't, I don't think it's on your list. I'm sorry about yeah. this and I'm butting in. Do you find it easier to give a negative review and say exactly what you think about a book where the author is dead? Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, this, this happened. I, I read Station Eleven before, before it was cool. <laughs> But before it really got hype on booktube, um, I read it because it was going to go in the Christmas catalogue of the bookshop where I worked, and my colleague had read it and she said that it was kind of so-so, she wasn't so sure about it. So I read it and kind of felt the same, I felt like I'd read things that were similar. But then when it started getting all this popularity, I started thinking, oh gosh, am I, am I just, am I wrong? Or can I just be like staunch in my opinions and <laughs> just be an, out, an outlier? Mm -hmm. um, but then I went and because I thought there were lots of interesting things and I thought well I will I'll read stuff that she writes in the future. I went to see her speak mm -hmm. in um, in Auckland, the Auckland Writers Festival and she started talking about bad reviews and, and then I started feeling really really bad that I'd given, I hadn't given it a scathing review, I'd just given it a reasonably low star rating. I yeah. think I'd given it two stars so I kind of, it was okay and that's that's kind of how I felt about it. Mm -hmm. You know, there were, there were things I liked, and, but in general, it was just, yeah. yeah. But, yeah, then I felt really bad and started thinking, oh, maybe I should change it, maybe I should put it no. really bad. <laughs> no, 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 no. Mm. No. Um, like, speaking as, as, as an author, <laughs> let's put my author hat on. <laughs> speaking as an author, I really, obviously, no one likes bad reviews. Mm. No one enjoys those. No. Um, and authors probably shouldn't read them. Um, mm. But we do, because we have no self-control, and if an author tells you that they don't look at their reviews, they are a liar, they are lying to themselves, um, <laughs> no, we do we read them, I'm sorry, it's the internet, we're gonna go look. Mm. So yeah, I do look at reviews, and I skim them, on Goodreads I'll skim, like looking at the star yeah. ratings. And you won't look at the five star ones, you'll look at the one star. Yeah, exactly, that's, that's the thing, you hone in on the negativity, and I hate that about life, like yeah. I will remember bad things. That's my problem though, it's not the person who wrote the review. Mm -hmm. I do not like it if someone gives, a, I'm talking about any book, gives like a bad review, but like a really bad review, and just says this is shit, or something. Yeah, it doesn't explain why. If you're being constructive, you say, I didn't like this about it, that is, that's fine, like, that's good, like, we can embrace <laughs> like, that. I didn't like the bookshop book because I don't like bookshops and I don't live in the UK. Yeah, I got that. <laughs> <laughs> that really made me laugh. I was gonna say, I'm sorry if the person who wrote that review is watching this video, yeah. but I'm sure that they're not. <laughs> yeah, the, a one-star review of the bookshop book on Goodreads last week that said I did not like this book because I do, do not live in the UK and I do not like bookshops and that just that just made me laugh. That's fine. I don't know why you read it in the first place but that is okay. That's okay. Um, mm. So yeah, stuff like that is fine. What I don't get is when people give really bad reviews and then we'll tweet it at the person who wrote it. I see that happening all the time I'm just like, dude, like, come on. It's just not nice. There's just no need. Um, so yeah, freedom of speech. Go say your bad stuff. Be constructive. It's like the rules of being a feminist by Kelly Moran. Yeah. You know, the be a nice person, don't be a dick. Um, that's it. <laughs> it. It's applicable here too. Um, just be get constructive and don't be mean. And um, yeah, don't don't tweet bad reviews at the authors because yeah. that's not very nice, dudes. Just, come on, we're people too. And creativity is hard. It is hard. Mm. Don't squish my creativity. <laughs> We all have different opinions and it's all absolutely fine, but I just think as long as you're being constructive about it, it's cool. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. Um, it's not hard really, is it? No? No. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't think so. It shouldn't be. It shouldn't be, no. Um, on, on the topic of authors being alive or dead, mm. um, the example that I wanted to use was Lolita by Vladimir Bogdan. Yes. Because this is, this is kind of my benchmark. In case you don't know what we're talking about, <laughs> this book. I quite like this cover, it's the one cover I think is alright, though I prefer yours that you did yeah. so. Oh, oh, thank you. Mm. Aww. All right. Aww. <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, so that was actually part of the reason that I was reading this book, is that I wanted to understand the cover art, and there's a whole book that has been written about yeah. the art of Lolita, and I think it's really fascinating, and I wanted to do my own design, so I had to read the book. So I had to force myself to finish it. For that reason, I gave it one star, because enjoyment-wise, I can't give a five star rating to a book yeah. that I really, really struggled with. So, and giving it three star didn't seem right either. 
so I think I had to choose either literary merit or enjoyment. Mm -hmm. So n now that is my benchmark. If I'm umming and ahhing about a review, I would go, Lolita gave it a one star. I can give this book three stars or whatever, due to enjoyment rather than literary merit. So was it the concepts inside it that you struggled with because it yes. deals with really difficult topics? And I think the fact that it's written so lyrically and beautifully and the idea is that you get dragged into this. I feel like we're advertising yeah. it a lot. Yeah. So, sorry. <laughs> but yeah, you, you, <laughs> you feel like you're being dragged into it and that you were somehow responsible as well because of because it's written in first person. Did you feel like he was trying to persuade you that what he was doing was okay? Yeah. 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 And then you're like, no, I don't want to be that. No, I can't do it. No, 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 no. Yes. <laughs> so you're you're looking through the eyes of this pedophile yeah. at this girl. So yeah, I mean it's awfully clever. It's very, very clever. Yeah, so I will rate a book based on other books like it. Yeah. Um, so I would never rate, say like, I don't know, thinking of crime or something, not wanting to put things in boxes, but crime is not normally the most like literary, poetic book, so I wouldn't mm. judge the way it's written based on, I don't know, can't think of an example now, but I wouldn't judge it. Girl on the Train, you, you said. Yeah, Girl on yeah. the Train, I really liked it, it was really compelling, um, I enjoyed it for what it was, mm -hmm. I can't remember what star rating I gave it, maybe four. Um, so on the spectrum of literary, like, literary? On the, spec on the spectrum of psychological thrillers, mm -hmm. like I really, really enjoyed it. Yeah. But I enjoyed it for a completely different reason than I might enjoy Romana Ossabel, mm -hmm. who is just like beautiful magical realism, like amazing yeah, yeah. writing. So, um, and I gave that one five stars, mm -hmm. but then no way the same. It's like I was saying to Holly, it's like Einstein saying the quote I'm going to get wrong. It's like if you tell a fish to climb a tree, it, it can't, and that doesn't mean it's stupid, it's just not made to climb a tree. Yeah, you almost need two different scales. I, I wouldn't rate a crime book low because I don't think it's written beautifully. So yeah, I, I rate things compared to similar things in the same genre that I have read and how I felt about them. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, that's how I do it anyway. There's no yeah, right answer. Tell us what you do. <laughs> Tell us. And do you change things on, on Goodreads? This is the other thing. Right? <laughs> yeah, the other thing. Yeah, how we feel about yeah. stuff after we've read it yeah. for a while. And you give it a month and you go, oh, actually, no, I think I jumped to conclusions there. Yeah. Or... Well, I gave The Heart Goes Last four stars, mm. and then I gave it three, but it was always sitting in a 3.5 in my head, but I decided yeah. to put it down to three. Goodreads. I, I did feel really bad about that, and I'm sure it's good. It, it's great, and I love. I keep on saying this. Yeah. I really love Margaret Atwood. I love it. I love her. She's mm. great. Uh, yeah, so I did change that one. But it comes up in your feed, doesn't it? It does. That is yeah. a thing. Like, and people think you don't know what you're talking about. You're yeah. changing your mind. We yeah. all change our minds. Mm. I think the thing is that when you read a book, it's of that moment. So I changed that one just because I didn't think that it. I don't know, it didn't show the 3.5 star because it's 4, I'd rather yeah. have it 3. That's the only reason mm. I changed that. But I don't tend to go back to books that I read years ago and change them because, like, for myself, back then, that, that, that me enjoyed mm. it that much. Yeah. Um, so that's sometimes why, I, why I'm terrified of going back and reading some of my favourite books because <laughs> maybe I won't love them as much anymore. And that's okay, but it would be sad but for then me. Then do you change the star rating? I have so many No, I don't... <sighs> I think if I had a really dramatic revelation when I reread a book that I loved. <laughs> oh, Twilight is abusive! <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> we have opinions on Twilight. Everyone has opinions on Twilight. We have opinions. Unless I had a really strong reaction where I realised that all my morals had changed in the last ten years. No, I don't think I would change it. Because, as yeah. I said, uh, it, the me back then loved it, or the me back then hated it. Mm, so, do you, do you have a deadline? like? I don't know. And I, 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 I look over <laughs> things that I've read in the past month, and I'll I'll sort of shuffle things around a bit. Mm -hmm. um, so, if I think, well, I gave this a four stars, and this I gave a three star, but actually they're more maybe similar. Can you tell that we really oh, overthink gosh. this a lot? Um, so basically, if you see me changing things on Goodreads or, or rating things over and over, they, didn't she read that months ago? It's just because I can't make up my mind. <laughs> Yeah, I tend not to do that, but if I'm unsure... Like nobody will trust me anymore. If I'm unsure about a book, I don't give it a rating for a while. And mm, I think about maybe it. I should do that. I should just not rate anything straight after I read it. Give well, it a month. you're in that bubble, you're in that hangover, yeah. book hangover. Mm. Um, and also, there are different levels of five stars as well. 
Absolutely. I, I gave The Grace Keepers five stars by Kirsty Logan. Um, and I've just finished reading her short story collection, her new one, A Portable Shelter. I also gave that five stars, but I liked it more than The Grace Keepers. Mm. So, but I don't regret giving The Grace Keepers five stars either. No, but then do you... What I do is I give it five stars and I put it on my favourite shelf. Or I put it on favourites for the year shelf and then see if it's worth putting it onto my favourites of all time shelf. Holly likes I lists. really <laughs> overthink things. Basically, everyone has very strong opinions about reviews mm -hmm. um, and about books that get hyped and then people read them and love them and maybe feel like they have to love them. I personally don't feel that pressure. Mm -hmm. I don't. If a book is hyped, I... I take a strange kind of pleasure in not liking it sometimes. Yeah. See, maybe if you see us reading a hyped book and we love it, that's like extra thumbs up. Because, yeah. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Because I, I tend, if somebody says, oh, you have to read this, then I'll oh, usually go, oh. Because somebody told me that about Twilight as well. Yeah. <laughs> this is the best book I've ever read. Yeah. Mm. And something, yeah, with regard to getting ox, something that also is maybe on top of that is questionable. I don't know if you've ever had this. But when you get sent books by friends, uh, you will have to deal with that in the future. Yes, yes. And I will be watching you. <laughs> I will be following her. And if Holly gives me a bad review, we're just not going to be friends well, anymore. Well, I, I make a point of only being friends with very talented people. Oh, so. she's very sweet. <laughs> Suck up. <laughs> um, yeah, so mm. that is something I have had to deal with. But thankfully, the books that I've read by my friends, I've really liked. And I do say also, if they're my friends, because yeah, obviously I am going to be like geared, like un unintentionally biased, but anything I say is true. But the relief you feel yeah. also when you oh, love gosh. it is yeah. like palpable. Uh, it's like when I took Holly to meet uh, Leo, a uh, book designer friend of mine, and Holly showed him her portfolio, and Leo's face when she asked if, if she could show him, he was like, oh shit, I hope she's good. <laughs> so then she opened it and he was like, oh, yes, okay, this is really good, we can work that, this is good. Um, but there is that awkwardness where you might be like, oh god, no, this is awful, or, or just like, not for you, and then uh, you don't want to hurt their feelings. So I've read, like, Karis Bray and Cassandra Parkin and, and Kirsty Logan, and... Emma Donoghue? Yeah, I, have, I haven't met Emma, but we have talked. Um, and yeah, so the, there is that pressure of when you've met people and know yeah. them and they're like, oh god. <laughs> but I haven't had that problem yet. But I'm sure, I'm saying, well, I'm not sure, because none of those people Probably are going to write crap books. But hopefully, I won't have that problem in the future. And mm. what do you do in that? What would you do? Just stay quiet, not read it? I don't know. It's. I mean, it, it's like if somebody asks you if, they, if you like their outfit or something. Like, <laughs> no, it's much worse than that. Well, like, it's much, much worse than that. But, um, so, like, the cover I mean, design it's is really not, nice. Like, you have to, yeah. <laughs> you compliment something that they didn't do. I suppose it depends how far into the publishing process it is as well. Yeah. Because if it's a first draft, then you can give criticism. And also, I'm not arrogant enough to think that it's going to be bad, and because, like, you, yeah. like if I think it's not that great, yeah. doesn't mean that it's not so either. Maybe it's like writing reviews for the bookshop. It's just a different sort of. It's more mm. refined, I don't know. careful, considered. I'm sure you will do the right thing if and when this ever happens. I'll report back if this yeah. ever happens. <laughs> Please write no, a friend of mine. No, you Never won't. write a book. <laughs> Never write a bad book. We've been talking for such a long time. We have. We've had to like clear three <laughs> memory cards. I don't know. <laughs> We've talked too much and we have to go film another video now. Yes. We're going to go film the first sentence challenge over on yeah. my channel. So yes. you can go watch that. It's going to be a bit more frivolous and less anxiety. Interesting. We need to calm down now. We need to chill. So that's what yeah. we're going to do. We're going to go have a giggle. We are. Even though we're giggling right now. We're, just... <laughs> we're very serious yeah. people. As always, thank you very much for watching and we'll see you over on Jen's channel. Okay, bye. Bye.